So I have a book here called The Worm, Disgusting Creatures by Elise Gravel, who's the same lady who wrote the Mushroom Club fan club that uh, you guys enjoyed so much the other week. So I thought I would read you this one too. And there's a whole series of these. She really likes disgusting creatures. So she has different books on the fly, the rat, the slug, head lice, and the spider. So I have them in the classroom. If you like this and you want to read more about it, you can. These are graphic novels that are nonfiction, so all true facts in here. <clears throat> I thought today would just be a fun time to read this to you. So Elise Gravel, the, the Worm. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you The Worm. Enchanté. That's French for probably something I would say. The worm is a long animal that's shaped like a tube. It doesn't have a skeleton or a spine. It's an invertebrate. It also doesn't have any legs. So what if I had legs? I'd have to buy shoes. There are many different kinds of worms. Here are some of them. The earthworm, he says, I'm the most popular. The tapeworm, I'm actually sticky, not, I'm um, not actually sticky. The flatworm, other side, over here. The white worm, I'm called a worm, but I don't, but I have, but I have legs, okay. And many insect larvae were like the maggot, which is a baby fly. So flies come from maggots. All types of worms. Some worm worms are so small that you need a microscope to see them, and others can be 115 feet or 35 millimeters long, like the ribbon worm that lives in oceans and rivers. So here's a little worm and then a big worm. Imagine that 115 feet long. That's big. Worms can live in different habitats. Some live in water, others live in rotting plants, and some even live inside human or animal bodies. And here we have inside of a dog, one worm saying to the other, please pass the salt. The worms living inside animals or humans are called parasites. The most common worm is, can you guess it? Earthworms. An earthworm is basically a long digestive tract inside a muscle tube. It's that muscle tube that's slimy and disgusting. Hey, I'm not disgusting. Worms have been on Earth for millions of years, maybe even billions. Biologists believe they evolved with the dinosaurs. Here's an old worm saying, back in my day, kids respected earthworms. Earthworms have no eyes, but they can sense light with something called photoreceptors. Sensors in the worm's skin that react to light. No eyes? That can't be true. I'm sure I had some eyes around here somewhere. Hmm, let me look. Earthworms move by squeezing their muscles, causing their bodies to contract and expand. And here he's showing you his muscles. But down here you see a picture. One, two, three, four, that's how they move. So they squeeze all up and then they expand and then they squeeze again and they move a little bit forward. Earthworms eat rotting plants and, and enrich the soil by making paths that let air and water circulate. The corn is saying, or whatever vegetable this is, thank you, kind sir. And the worm is saying, you're welcome, madam. It's good for nature, so worms are good for nature. Many kinds of worms are hermaphrodites. That means they have both male and female reproductive organs. In other words, an earthworm is a boy and a girl at the same time. They still need a partner to reproduce though. So here's the one earthworm saying, you look ravishing dear. Like here's the boy side and here's the girl side. So that's interesting that earthworms are both boys and girls at the same time. Earthworms might seem pretty gross, but they're very useful. They recycle nature's waste and help turn it into soil. Farmers and gardeners love 
earthworms. Fishermen use earthworms to catch fish and some people even eat them and find them delicious. What? Delicious? No, no, no. I'm disgusting. I'm disgusting. Mm. I don't know if I would eat an earthworm. Although I did eat a snail in Vietnam once. Didn't go down so good. So next time you want to meet an earthworm, be polite. Worms are your friends. Hey, want to play football? So that was The Worm by Elise Gravel. And I have another book here too. Um, I happen to have two worm, really cool graphic novel worm books. Uh, this is another author that I really like. His name is Kevin McCloskey. And he also, uh, he, write, he wrote books like uh, The Real Poop on Pigeons. And he's got one on fish. Um, but this one's called We Dig Worms. So here it starts out. Worm comes out of a little hole, starts to go, and you can see how big he can really get. We dig worms. There's many different worms. Tree worms, sea worms, river worms. Gummy worms. The worms in parks and gardens are called earthworms. Hello, little worm. Worms feel light through their skin. They have no eyes and no nose. Worms do a lot of important work. I said, hello, little worm. I eat dead leaves and bugs. My tunnels bring air and water to the soil to help plants grow. When worms dig, twisting and turning, they make the earth earthier. My poop is good for the soil. Ew! Worm poop is called castings. Worms are cool, maybe to you. Worms feel cool. They have cold blood. So this is a map of the worm. So I have to do it backwards, this one. Head, okay, over here, let's see. So the head is here. I don't know how to pronounce this. Clitellum, only grownups have these. This is where the eggs become cocoons. So if you see, sometimes you'll see an earthworm that has like a larger spot in the middle. I guess that's a grown up then. On the, so this is the outside over here. Worms don't have lungs. They breathe through their skin. Cocoons are worms born from cocoons. Worms are born from cocoons. So this is what the cocoons look like. And setae, setae are bristles, tiny bristles that help the worms move. So I guess on the outside of the skin, they have these tiny little bristles. You can barely even see. On the inside over here, okay, only muscles and nerves. Worms have no bones. They have an anus, an intestine, gizzard and crop, which is two different kinds of stomachs. They have blood vessels. Here they have five pairs of hearts. And then they also have a nerve core and it looks like they have a teeny tiny little brain. I wouldn't have thought they had one of those. And here is a mouth. So that's kind of interesting. I'll hold that up for a sec. Mr. Worm, why do you come out after the rain? And that's not something that we've talked about yet. It's easy to wiggle when it's wet. Worms move and breathe better when it's wet. And look at that beautiful mushroom we have there. Excuse me, Mr. Worm. Do you have a big family? Oh, yes. 
One worm can have 100 babies. Yum, the bird is saying, yum. How many worms live here? Millions, 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 millions. Over one million worms can live in a small park. How big is the biggest worm in the world? Yum, yum, says that bird. The Australian Gippsland worm grows to be 10 feet long. Wow, that's as tall as an elephant. I think in the other book we read that there was one 114 feet, 15 feet. Hey, little worm, I'm hungry. You want to have lunch with me? Why did the little worm go away? Was it something the bluebird said? Here's the bluebird. I want to meet you for lunch, worm. Sorry, Bluebird, I have some important work to do. Here's the work that he has to do. And by now, you know that he's digging tunnels in the soil, leaving castings behind and eating up the dead things. Maybe tomorrow. Thank you, worms. The end. About the author, Kevin McCloskey teaches illustration of illustration at Cutstown University in Pennsylvania, and he painted these worms in pictures on recycled grocery bags because just like worms, he believes in recycling. Pretty cool, huh? Nice. So like I said, he has a couple of other books too that uh, some of the younger kids like. It's kind of a fun thing. All right, enjoy.